So, to start at the beginning of the story, um, the Australian report was produced by the National Health and Medical Research Council, NHMRC, which is a government research institute in Australia with a very, um, uh, very good reputation. So, this is a very serious report. They produced uh, their publication in March 2015. It covered 61 health conditions, and their overreaching conclusion was there are no health conditions for which there is reliable evidence that homeopathy is effective. There was some positive stuff, but none of it was worthwhile. And of course, we have a little sound bite from the chief executive saying that their review had shown there is no good quality evidence to support the claim that homeopathy works better than a placebo. Even if what the Australians had found was true, that they didn't find any evidence it worked, this was misreported as the fact that they'd said homeopathy doesn't work, which is a completely different thing, but that happens all the time. So it went around the world, homeopathy doesn't work, we've looked at all the studies, and there's nothing there. So when we at uh, HRI took a look at this, you realise very quickly there's one key word in their conclusion, reliable. If they're saying there's no reliable evidence, what was their definition of a reliable trial? And when you read it, it says it has to be good quality, well designed, and with enough participants for a meaningful result, which I think you'd agree sounds completely reasonable, until you read what they mean by that. And what they mean is that a trial has to have a minimum of 150 people in it, and it has to have a quality score on the JDAD scale, which only goes from one to five, of five. Now, to understand exactly how weird this is, the quality score being set at that level, we could not find another review that does that. And as for the 150 participants, I mean, this really is out of thin air. It's not just unprecedented, it's scientifically without any basis whatsoever. So, of course, there are no other studies in the world we've ever found that use this kind of threshold. And one thing we've pointed out is that the NHMRC themselves fund trials with less than 150 people in them all the time. So if they're unreliable, why are they funding them? So this is really bad news. And what happened in the Australian report was if a trial failed on either of these criteria, the results were dismissed on the basis that these studies are of insufficient quality and or size to warrant further consideration of their findings. So HRI team looked at the report and we worked out what was the impact just of those two factors, 150 and quality, let alone everything else they did in their data analysis. And yes, they started with this 1,800 studies, but actually, after they put their inclusion criteria and they just threw away things that they didn't feel were suitable for the review, they only actually ever looked at 176 trials. So that's the first important thing to understand about this, is the results were actually based on 176 studies, not over 1800. We then applied the 150 filter and if you do that you're left with 30 trials. We then applied their quality scale to the 30 that were left and that reduces the evidence base to five trials. Now if you reduce our evidence base to five trials it is not actually very surprising that you conclude that there's no reliable evidence for 58 of the conditions that they looked at. What is extremely surprising, though, is that somehow they still manage to conclude definitively that homeopathy is not more effective than placebo for 13 conditions. Now, how on earth can they conclude about 13 conditions when they're saying only five trials are reliable? So there's two big issues with the academic document with the Australian report. The first is it's actually just not very good. The reason it's bad quality is because a lot of the data in it is simply wrong, and that's because they use the wrong method. So the overview method means that you take lots of systematic reviews and you summarise them. Now, when you think that a systematic review is already summarising lots of individual trials, can you see we're going from primary data to a summary to a summary of a summary? So you have to be incredibly careful when you're doing that, that you don't lose the essence of the original studies. It has to be done very well. And for that reason, overviews are only ever meant to be done on very high quality systematic reviews. So the data is good in the first place and then you summarise it. Optum themselves said that only seven of the systematic reviews were high quality. So the moment they realised that, they should not have done an overview because you just can't do it. But they did. 
Now, what you normally do with an overview is when you're looking at systematic reviews, if there's any data that's unclear or missing, you go to the original study. You just go to that paper and find what you're looking for. With the homeopathy review, they decided not to do that, but they say in their documents they had to rely on the way that the studies were reported in the systematic reviews. They had to. No, they didn't. They chose to. Those are very different things. And a lot of the problems with this report come back to the fact that they never read any of the 176 studies. They just didn't go there. So, February this year, the, Australians, uh, the Australian homeopathic community took legal advice and were told that the only way we could possibly get this report taken down was to do an ombudsman challenge because NHMRC are a government institution. So they are accountable to the taxpayer, to the public, on the grounds of procedural irregularities, bias, conflict of interest, uh, misfeasance, and anything where you can say they were not treating evidence fairly, objectively, or they're misleading the public. So we felt it was our basic remit for this ombudsman submission. After pulling apart a lot of stuff they did and the process and everything else, in the end, these were the two things we had to prove were wrong. Uh, this is the second page of the executive summary. This is their key findings. No good quality, well-designed studies with enough people were positive. None. Not one good trial. That is obviously wrong. And their overarching conclusion that we started with, that because of that, there's no health conditions for which we have reliable evidence. Now, we had to prove that that is inaccurate and highly misleading to the public. So we did that by finding positive studies that were completely unjustifiably missing. And by that we mean they knew about them. These went to the reviewers. They met the inclusion criteria. They were good quality on their terms. They were positive. The result was statistically significant. And they were unrefuted by any other studies on the same treatment. So we focused on five conditions where we felt we could make the strongest case diarrhea in children, sinusitis, allergic rhinitis, URTIs, and back pain. So we gave them a list of exactly which studies we felt the public should have been made aware of through this review that weren't there and why. So to conclude, there's only really two ways you can look at this. The procedural failures, the conflict of interest, that side of things, of which there's a huge amount of information that I've deliberately not talked about today, that's not open to interpretation. If you break your own guidelines, if you don't follow normal scientific procedures, then you know, that's hard to, to argue with. But the kind of area we were working on, to some extent, you can start saying it's scientific opinion. But in the end, I remember thinking, it's the NHMRC. They are literally world leaders in conducting systematic reviews. I find it hard to believe you could accidentally do this bad a job when you're the NHMRC. So our overriding argument to the Ombudsman is that means it is misfeasance and that means it is not an intentional scientific error and that's why we have asked for the entire report to be rescinded and for any knock-on effect that report has had to be reversed.